Okay, let's learn about some of the electrical and electronic components. Okay, so remember there are two kinds of components. One is the passive component, the other one is the active component. Does anyone know the difference between the two? So the difference between the two is passive components, they don't require any external signal or voltage in order to perform their job, right? Resistor is just one piece of component. You just put it in the circuit and its job is to resist the flow of current, correct? Similarly, capacitors, they are two terminal devices. You just hook it up in the circuit and their job is to store the charge. They don't need any external supply or voltage in order to perform their task. Similarly for inductors. Whereas if you look up active components, which are tube devices and semiconductor devices, such as diodes, transistors, ICs, for a transistor to work, it needs to be powered up. You need to supply a voltage, which is also referred to as VCC in some of the schematics, right? Similarly, if you have a diode, like a light emitting diode, it needs to be powered up, right? So if it's a red LED, it needs to be powered up by providing 1.8 volt. Let's now move on to resistors. We all know that resistor basically uh, restrict or would resist the flow of the current. Uh, in a good analogy, and a very simple analogy, is if you look at this pump right here, uh, which could be a battery for you, okay? And this pump is basically pumping water, okay? When the pump starts, the water starts flowing, it goes through this filter right here, okay? So you have this sand filter right here. Now, depending upon the, uh, the course of this filter, whether it's really fine or not really fine, the water is going to resist. So if it's a very fine filter, like if, say it has a carbon nanotube, like very small holes, so the resistance will be higher or uh, lower, higher. So the resistance is in that case will be very high, okay? But if I had the sand filter, which has a lot of holes in there, it's not very fine. That means the resistance is going to be low and the more water will flow over here. So this sand filter is basically acting as a resistance here, okay? Now, if you hold a resistor in your hand, and if you notice, uh, it'll basically have three bends, okay? So focus on this graphic right here. Uh, it has red band, first one, and then yellow, and then has the brown, right? Brown. So looking at the resistor, how you can find out the value of the resistor, that's pretty simple, and uh, you can take use of this sheet right here. Red represents what? Red represents two, right? Two, so you write two here, okay? And then the second band is yellow, so let's look at the color code for yellow. Yellow is four. Uh, so you get four here and then brown would mean you just add one zero. Okay, so this is a 240 ohm resistor Okay, so uh, Similarly, if I look at this one right here, this is orange orange brown. So orange. What is the color code for orange? Uh, the color code for orange is three uh, Orange again, so three again and then brown brown just add one zero here, so that's 330 ohm and that's what they have over here too. Okay, so that's pretty simple how you calculate <clears throat> uh, 330 or, or like a value of a resistance. Also this last bin uh, represents the tolerance. Um, so it could be 5% um, or 10% depending on the color like gold or silver. And that's how your real value of the resistor may vary. Okay? Usually it's given. Uh, your capacitors, uh, the two most, you know, widely used and you probably have seen, uh, the one on the right is also referred to as uh, electrolytic capacitor. It looks like a cylinder, okay? And then you have these very tiny ones. They are hard to hold in your hand. These are the ceramic resistors. And if you ever wondered, like, what is these codes written on it? What do they mean? Uh, so this 2D here, basically represents the maximum voltage. And similarly for this one, electrolytic, that's 25 volt right here. Uh, capacitance here, one microfarad, uh, 103 capacitance. So 103, um, yeah. Uh, so that means it's a 10 nanofarad right here is the conversion right here. So 10 times 10 to the power three. So this is the exponent, okay, this three right here. Yeah, so 10 nanofarad, 
And then uh, the ceramic has no polarity. The electrolytic has a polarity. The longer lag is positive, the small lag is negative. Um, also, this J right here represents the tolerance. Um, and also here, um, <clears throat> tolerance for the electrolytic capacity as well. Here are the tolerance level right here. So J would mean uh, plus minus 5%, okay? And similarly, the maximum voltage with the ceramic is 2D over here. 2D would mean uh, 200 volt, okay? So um, I always wonder like, how, what does these letters mean over here? So um, <clears throat> this is pretty handy. So let's look at the capacitors right here. And I'm gonna use um, a couple of analogies to uh, explain capacitors and also inductors, okay? Imagine I have a water pipe right here, okay? And I have a valve right here, okay? Which is controlling the flow of the water. When I open this valve, the tank that you see over here, the storage tank is basically acting as a capacitor, okay? You also have this water outlet over here. The water is pouring down out of it, okay? And if the thickness, of this pipe is same over here, which would also mean the flow in and the flow out would also be the same. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is when I turn the water valve on, the water level will start going up gradually and gradually. Okay, All right. When I stop the water supply, when I stop the water supply, the water will continue to pour out of this, uh, uh, water out and the water level will start going down and eventually the storage tank will be empty and that's when uh, there's no water, right? No water coming out. That's exactly how the um, capacitors work. When you, so this can be replaced as a battery, okay? You have this capacitor over here, okay? And then this could be say, a light bulb, okay? Okay, now I'll give you this example in this slide right here. So maybe I can, um, what am I gonna say? Yeah, here. So you have the positive terminal over here, you have the negative terminal over here, you have this resistor over here and the LED, and then you have switch. If I press this switch, what is going to happen? This LED is gonna turn on, right? And if I keep on, toggling, so this LED will then blink, right? When the metal contact uh, makes a metal contact, it will uh, turn on, when I release it, it goes back here. And then if I repeatedly can keep on doing that, it will start blinking, okay? But if I add a capacitor in parallel, okay? So you have positive here and negative here. Uh, and then the you see the metal thing is still closed. The LED will still be on. Right, but oops, yeah, oops, look at that. Yeah, now what would happen if I disconnect this over here? Okay, there's no a disconnect, there's a disconnect to the battery, okay? You have the positive terminal, have the battery here, negative terminal, battery here. I'm just disconnecting the battery. What would happen to the LED? Will it stay on or it will go off? Just use the same analogy that we use for the, the water, okay? The water tank. Because you already have some water in there, so similarly, you, the capacitor, when the, it was connected to the battery, it got charged real quick, but even though the battery is disconnected, capacitor still has some charge, right? And this charge will keep on flowing, right? Similarly. But eventually what's gonna happen after some time, when all the charges are released, it will go out eventually, right? The LED will go off. So very simple analogy for understanding how the capacitors work. Um, if you wanna do a comparison of like, uh, that uh, 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 capacitor, which was acting like a voltage source and battery, um, the capacitor, they release charge very fast, okay? Whereas the battery, they charge uh, release uh, slowly. So they last long, 
they have a better, uh, like a higher battery life, whereas the capacitor has a uh, smaller. Okay. But these things are useful uh, just when you uh, want to make sure if there's an uh, electric supply outage in the smaller circuits, and you want to make sure that you have some kind of backer, a backup, uh, capacitors are real handy. Um, inductors, okay. So inductors are basically, you take a piece of copper wire and then have those windings, and that's what makes uh, inductor, inductors. And when you apply the current and let them flow through it, uh, it just creates a, a magnetic field around it. So how the inductance is calculated, um, pretty simple, A right here is basically the or outside diameter, uh, we'll do a derivation uh, Thursday and I'll explain uh, more of it. The length of the coil is from here to here. Okay, that, that's what the uh, L, uh, no, I is in the equation right here. Uh, you have the total number of turns. So one turn is, this whole thing is one turn. So you count the number of turns. Usually when you buy an inductor, it's actually given in the data sheet. Um, and L is the inductance, again, that will be available. You put that, those numbers in this equation and then find out the inductance, okay? Um, let's try to understand inductors through uh, this water uh, analogy. Again, we have this pump. Uh, you can also think of it as a battery, okay? Uh, so this pump is basically pumping the water, okay? The water, you have this water wheel here, okay? You also have uh, a small resistance over here the water will take the route of the least resistance, but once it gets over here, it uh, realizes that this water wheel has some weight, okay? So it will have higher resistance and it will not move until enough force is exerted over here, which is enough to keep this uh, wheel moving. Initially, this wheel is gonna start moving slowly, but gradually it's gonna speed up uh, and pick up the speed, whatever we have at the input, okay? But because that does not happen immediately, water will start flowing to the route of the least resistance and go this way, okay? But when it picks up, um, the slowly and slowly fan starts moving, uh, the resistance will reduce and it will start pumping water to this, uh, this route right here. But what is going to happen, what is going to happen uh, if I disconnect, if I disconnect the power over here from the pump, what is going to happen to the wheel? Will it continue to move or it will stop immediately? What would happen? Yes, folks. Um, there will be some momentum from the water wheel, so it'll still go. Correct. So there is still some momentum right here, which is continue to keep moving the water view, and that would allow the current to go past. But eventually, after some time, it will keep on losing that momentum, that inertia that was already built up. It will start reducing, and then it will stop. So that is exactly what inductor is doing. Initially, it has a you know. Um, a very high resistance, but when it gets the current, it, the, the, uh, the, uh, the resistance gets very smaller, it starts inducing the current into the circuit, uh, and then once you cut off the power supply, it will still keep on producing some current because it has some charges already stored within the magnetic field that was initially created when a, a power supply was applied to the inductor. Okay, um, so here's uh, if I have a circuit which is connected to the battery, so you have a positive terminal, and negative terminal, uh, you have the switch over here, um, you have the inductor, LED lamp will uh, light up. Over here, um, can anybody tell me what happens now when the electricity is, uh, the power supply is supplied, the, it will go past the inductor, the LED is not lit, uh, lamp is not light up over here. Why is that? Uh, I guess it's because uh, with the time flows, uh, the resistance of the inductor uh, gradually reduced, and then the, the current is to go through the uh, flow with a lower resistance, and mm -hmm. uh, with the inductor one. 
Right. So that is correct. Exactly. So remember, you know, it, it, we have a lamp here, but you can have a motor or a fan or whatever. It has some resistive load. Okay. So the current will just keep on uh, doing it uh, like this. Uh, just when we were looking at the water analogy. Okay. Uh, over here, the current was going this way. It didn't go uh, this way because uh, resistance here, which is a light bulb uh, in the uh, example that we are doing. But once it gets to over here, it realized this thing has high resistance. It will start moving this way then. Okay. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, now, so light up, then uh, connecting the load, uh, just keep on doing over here. And then once I disconnect the switches, once I disconnect the switch, that means there is still some charge stored over here in this magnetic field right here and this will start flowing to the bulb what is going to happen eventually what is going to happen eventually eventually we are going to run out of these charges right charges and this led light lamp will go off 